بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم بیک ٹو ٹرولی ڈاٹ پاکستان بلاک یو ٹیوب چینل ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا فیچرز آف انڈس پلینس سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ فرسٹ آف آل ویل ٹاک اباؤٹ دی اپر انڈس پلین لیٹس ہیو اے لک ایٹ دا میپ آف اپر انڈس پلین ان اپر انڈس پلین ریور انڈس فلوز ود اٹس ایسٹرن ٹریبیوٹریز وچ آر نیملی جہلم چناب راوی اینڈ سدلج دیز ایسٹرن ٹریبیوٹریز کنفلوئنس ایٹ پنجنت کنفلوئنس از وین ٹو اور مور ریورس جوائن ٹوگیدر اینڈ فلو ایز ون ریور سو آل دا ایسٹرن ٹریبیوٹریز کنفلوئنس ایٹ پنجنت اینڈ دین فلو ایز ریور پنجنت دس ریور پنجنت فلوز آلموسٹ سیونٹی ٹو کلو میٹر ساؤتھ ویسٹ ورڈس اینڈ دین فائنلی کنفلوئنسز ان ٹو ریور انڈس ایٹ مٹھن کوٹ ناؤ لیٹ اس ہیو اے لک ایٹ دا کوآڈینیٹس آف اپر انڈس پلین دی اپر انڈس پلین کمپرائزز آف نارتھرن اینڈ نارتھ ایسٹرن پنجاب اٹ انکلوڈس سینٹرل پنجاب and the areas from Atak to Mithan Court are a part of the upper Indus Plain. Time to look at the relief. The relief of upper Indus Plain has flat undulating land. The upper Indus Plain has a gentle slope to the southwest. That is why the eastern tributaries they flow towards southwest. Duabs are common here and they are formed namely Sinsagar Duab, Chaj Duab, Bari Duab and Rachna Duab. You can have a look at the detailed video about Duabs on our channel. Don't forget to check out the playlists. In Upper Indus Plain, Piedmont Plains are formed and the soils are thick and alluvial. As far as the drainage of our upper Indus plain is concerned, there is Indus and its eastern tributaries flowing here. That is why the water action is very high. Indus flows in its middle course. The speed is medium since the river is entering from the tall lofty mountains in the north. Erosion and deposition is very active here. The landscape features like meanders, oxbow lakes, braided channels are formed by the rivers. You must remember that the definition of these features must be learned by the candidates. However, the formation is not included in your syllabus. But you should identify these features through photographs as well. Moving on to Lower Indus Plain. First up the map of Lower Indus Plain. In this Indus Plain, The eastern tributaries of River Indus had already confluenced at Mitten Court as I explained in the first map. From Mitten Court southwards, River Indus flows alone. So from Mitten Court southwards, we have the Lower Indus Plain. There are no more additions or confluences into River Indus in Lower Indus Plain. Let's have a look at the coordinates of Lower Indus Plain. Lower Indus Plain starts from South Punjab. It includes areas from North Sindh and North West Sindh. It includes the South West Sindh as well. The Lower Indus Plain has the areas from Mitten Court to Sindh Coast. Some students don't identify the Lower Indus Plain being located in Southern Punjab. You must remember that for map labeling, the shading of Upper and Lower Indus Plain must be done. Let's have a look at the relief. The relief of upper and lower Indus plain is not that different. There is flat undulating land. The slope of the lower Indus plain is towards south. Piedmont plains are common and the soils are thick and alluvial. However, the drainage is a little different. Indus here flows alone unlike the upper Indus plain. There are no doabs because for doabs you need two or more rivers. However, meanders, oxbow lakes, braided channels are common. Deposition in Lower Indus Plain is active. 
but erosion is very minimal, rather non-existent. The reason behind that is that the river has a very slow gradient. It flows in its lower course and is carrying a lot of bed load. Additionally, the land is extremely flat. So due to these reasons, deposition becomes active and erosion is minimal. Indus has lower course at the extensive flatland and the bed load slows down the speed. What is bed load? Bed load is all organic or non-organic material carried by the river. Organic material is more common. Non-organic material is found in the rivers, especially during the flood time. Bed load has three types, as you can see in this diagram. Number one is the dissolved load. All the minerals and salts that can dissolve in the water is called the dissolved load. You cannot see it, however, it can be found through water testing. Number two is the suspended load. The particles of silt and alluvium and sand is carried along the drift of the water by the river. This material is lightweight so the river can take it from long distances and deposit in shallow areas. The third type of bed load is the heavy rocks and boulders. These can roll across the bed of the river and can be relocated as well during flood time because the water is gushing through uh, the river during the flood times. Both upper and lower Indus plains are economically very active. These areas have cash crop farming of cotton, wheat, sugarcane and rice because the soils are fertile and rich in nutrients. Large scale industries like cement, fertilizer can be installed here because the land is flat and expensive where machinery can be installed. Animal rearing of cattle, goats, buffaloes is ideal and at large practiced here since fodder crops are also grown here and water supply is ample as well. Trade among provinces is very active since flatland encourages the development of road and railway links and also dry ports. Due to all the above reasons, the population density is high in upper and lower Indus plain. Since these plains provide and encourage employment opportunities for the population. I hope that was helpful to all of you. Thank you for watching. Share comments, questions and suggestions below. And don't forget to watch the video about Duabs as well. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and click the bell icon.